With this movie, we'll take a look at a very powerful feature of Anime Studio Pro, and that is layer animation. This is something available only in the Pro Edition, so if you're working with regular Anime Studio, you'll see some of the flexibility that this feature gives you when you're working on your projects. What we'll do here is imitate a typical Hollywood trick with a camera swing. We're going to have a downtown scene or some tall buildings, and we're going to be at street level, look up to the top of the buildings, and then zoom up towards the top of one of the buildings. This would be a very complex thing to animate if you don't have layer animation, and let me show you what I mean. The first thing we'll do, I've got a layer in here, and if you have access to the working files, go ahead to 0706 layer animation, and you'll see this one completed. The first layer in here I have already named sky. I'll need to draw a square, and this is going to be our generic blue sky in the background. Go ahead and do the select shape layer, that of course is keyboard shortcut Q. I'll turn that to some delightful summertime blue. And then we're going to create a new layer. But to do that, we're going to actually import some buildings that I had created in Adobe Illustrator. One of the reasons I created those in Illustrator instead of actually drawing them in Anime Studio is like many drawing packages, Anime or Illustrator actually has some excellent replication tools that you can use when you're working with regular shapes like windows or building features. So. Let's take a look at this. We've got our general buildings in here, and they're, they're a little bit juvenile looking, uh, possibly, but you may want a flat color. We could certainly dress these up as much as we wanted. And in fact, if we're working with image layers, you can go ahead and do this exact same thing with images, and that would be imported pictures. What I want to do is zoom up closer to these, but I'm not going to move anything, and I want to point out a special little feature in the sky layer. You can double click on the sky layer or go to the little ellipsis, the dot, 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 which lets you know that there's more information on this layer. We'll open that up. There's a feature down here, and actually the one I opened was the city block layer. Let me go ahead and cancel this and double click on our sky layer. There's a feature down here we have not looked at before, and it's going to have to do with exactly what we'll do in just a little bit when we move the camera in our scene. I don't want the sky layer to change position or anything like that, so I'm going to click the option here, immune to camera movements. That means that it essentially locks this layer down to exactly the way we see it right now. And we won't have any type of uh, change in size or scale when we move the camera around the scene. I'll select OK. One of the reasons I like building scenes like this is so you can just kind of see that the process and maybe pick up a few shortcuts that makes your life working with this program significantly easier. The next thing I'll also want to do after we expand these, well let me just expand them first. I'll go ahead and zoom that back. I'll select my scale tool, keyboard shortcut S, and then I'll select everything in the scene. Let me get our, my scale tool up here, scale points. We're going to make these buildings rather large and one of the reasons for that is when we go ahead and tilt the layer for our fake perspective, we'll need to have the top part get significantly smaller. Pressing the keyboard shortcut T, I'm going to go ahead and translate that just a little bit. And now we'll go ahead and zoom in just a little closer to our render box here. Now the one thing that I want to see right now is exactly what is going to render. If I do the keyboard shortcut Command R on the Mac or Control R on the PC, We'll see a quick little render that shows us, so oh, it's kind of a straight on view. I haven't created any fake perspective in the buildings here just yet. That would be a, a finessing touch we could do later on. But I want to hide all the stuff outside of the viewable area. So there's a keyboard shortcut to it, but we'll come up to the view menu and come down to show output only. This hides everything beyond the render frame that you're working with and can give you a very quick idea of what things will look like when you're finally done with them. So I'm going to now move down my timeline to about say frame 24. I'm going to come to my layer tools and we have right here on the left side in the middle row a rotate layer X tool. I'll select that now, no keyboard shortcut for it. I'll go ahead and move my mouse up the screen and we'll see now that we get to this view way up to the top of the building. Well, to create this type of shift without layer animation is just a lot of work, which is the reason this is in the pro version. Pros do stuff like this all the time. Well, now that we have got our building skewed, let's come down to our timeline. Hey, wait a minute. There is no keyframe showing down here. What's the problem? Well, no problem at all. The fact is that most of the time, to make your working experience a little nicer, many of the keyframeable options have been hidden. 
We can change that with the settings. And since we're working with layer animation right now, we can actually enable all of these other layer properties and see those real time now down here. So the keyframe for the rotate X we now see in the timeline. The next thing we'd want to do is a camera move where we move up like that. If we come to settings, I can go ahead likewise and enable all the camera options that we can keyframe. I'll select OK. Those will also populate down in our timeline. We haven't done anything yet, so there is no keyframe. Before we start moving the camera, I want to go ahead and come down here. Right above the line, you can control click on the Macintosh, or I should say option click, or you can right click on the PC. You get an option to add a keyframe, and I'll choose that right there. I don't want the camera to move through this preceding part, only after we get right here. Well, now that we're at this one second point, since we're at 24 frames, I'm going to move further down, say uh, another second down the timeline, I will select the camera zoom tool. Now I can go ahead and zoom into this. And I can go ahead and track the camera a little bit different. We'll pull that up like that. And now if we go ahead and, well, we'll double check, we've got the keyframes in place. If I scrub the timeline now, grabbing the timeline control, we see that we get this nice pan up and then this zoom. So if we were to go ahead and play it, which I'll do now, pans up and we zoom to the top. Very easy thing to do with layer animation.